Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another video of checking out one of your guys' solar systems. So today's system is from the user Planet and Mug in Discord so a massive thank you to them for sending this simulation and their system is called Between Life and Death. There's a hope of living and money. So let's go ahead and see what they have prepared for us here. The name's interesting, I'm intrigued. So let's go ahead and check it out. It's on the subscribe. There it is there. Alrighty, what do we got here then? Let's go and have a look. Right, here we go. Oh, let's reopen it again. It's really weird with the uh, way they open these days. There we go. Let's wait, open it twice to get the actual description box. So there we go. And voila. So, here it is. Whoa, that's a lot of orbits. Oh my god. Looking interesting already. Between life and death, there's a hope of living and money. Welcome to the... Nuglacine star groups, comprised of six stars, located in the far edge of the Milky Way. I'm Planet and Mark, here to guide you on a journey to the wonders of this star groups. Okay, we'll start our journey with the main star of the cluster, Rhine. Or Rhine. Um, there it is. Certain things may not make sense, and feel free to question why I created such ideas. Huh. Unlike this other system, this one has a do not press play button, I promise you. Okay, so ooh, we'll have to maybe press play at some point then. Um... Okay, so the star itself, a very heavy iron G4 yellow dwarf that is uh, somehow by time outlives its white dwarf K1b companion star. Interesting. There it is. Okay, so moving on. The first of the major objects is called uh, Galai here. And where is that? Is that somewhere? Where, where are we? Have I got to dig it out in there? Where, where are we? It's going to be quite hard to find. <laughs> So the second planet is there, but where's the first one? <laughs> is it buried in there somewhere? A hot Mercury planet resides in the dangerous zone swarmed by asteroids. Okay. I'm trying to spot it. Let's quickly search for it. So, uh, G, A, there it is. Oh, I was never going to find that. It's got such a dark trail. Oh, that's cheeky. So there it is. It does look pretty hot here, doesn't it? Hot Mercury-like planet resides in a danger zone surrounded by a swarm of asteroids. Its surface is a very rare substance that glows in the dark. Used mostly in light sensor tools made by the Deathlings, making it a very busy mining site. Looks pretty damn hot. There it is. Turn the goggles off. You get the full blast. Oh yeah, look at it from behind. Oh yeah, there you go. Looking good. Cool. So these are all the asteroids, the dangerous asteroid area, all this stuff around here, all these other objects. So moving on to the second planet over here. We got um, this one. There it is. There. So it is a uh, Verk tool, a ring planet, rocky planet with lots of canyons, has lots of minerals, making it a common mining site. Okay. Turn off all the stuff and see its rings. Looking very nice. Not often you see rockies with rings. So there you go. Its rings look a little bent. Look at that. It's definitely been some carnage here in the past. Look, you can see the rings all over the place. Interesting stuff. Okay. So the moon as well. The bee. There it is. An asteroid with also lots of minerals, explaining why there's a lot of satellites from the Durflings that orbit the planet. Def Durflings, yeah. Satellite, lots of satellites. Okay. Nice, there you go. Next up, we've got this one over here. F fine, fine. There it is. Losing material, but it looks like things. Smoking up. Turn my goggles off. Can't see any of those rings. There you go. So, a planet. Uh, where is it? Um. A brown gas planet and three native moon with three native moons and one captured moon. Okay. So the first of the moons we've got. Where's where's B? I see C D E. Where's B? Where is B? Oh, there it is. Very dark trail colours. Completely spotlit. There it is. So a small grey moon that also has a very effective version of the glowing dark substance the Durf, uh, Deathling use. That glows 10% better than those found in the galley. Using advanced light sensor machine made by the Durflings. Okay. There you go. Put some of that there. Okay. okay we've got C over here. Standard moon by Durflings. Definition. Okay. Object D. Volcanically active Iolite moon has a unique yellow brown spots on its surface. Nice. You can see them there. Looking good. And object E all the way over here. Captured retrograde orbit. Large moon with unique large brown spot on its surface. It has captured Fane EB in the 
process. There it is. Native moon, who's now captured by the uh, E moon, becoming the moon lin. There you go. Nice. Cool. All right, so there's those guys. So next up, we're heading to Durf, which is probably where all of these species come from in this object or system. So there it is. A planet where the Durfling, which is a Democrat species, is from. It is a habitable planet with a low average temperature of 7. Okay. Nice. Pretty ocean heavy as well, by the things. There's its moon. Also with oceans. A moon with a two tone atmosphere due to high radite scattering and particularly temperate climates with calm oceans. Little to no stormy days. It's an ocean world with lukewarm oceans. Nice. Cool. Looking good. Sweet. There's both of those guys. Now we're moving on to Flowey over here. A planet where lots of different but equally very, very rare species of flowers called Flowey grow on the ores and mineral of the planet. Mimicking the shape of ores and minerals it grows on, flowery flowers can be found in deep, damp underground caves that sunlight can't reach on the planet. The risk of cave rockfall or caving is high while we're retrieving the plant, so it fetches a high price on the uh, Durfing market. Price depends on the type of ore minerals it grows on. Okay. Nice. Interesting. Object B over here. Um, a Mars moon from oxidation, uh, light moon from oxidation. There are traces of proof that life used to be here. So it's pretty dead though. That's a Mars light world. Cool. Next up we got uh, Salid. Salad. Over here. I almost called it Salad for a second. But there it is. A planet with lots of mineral rich ice that gets mined by the Durflings, making extra, um, extra vagrant quality water. Uh, the quality is determined by how natural the process of making the water is, from machine to standard underground um, extra vagrant. Marvellous. Okay. Cool. Next up, we have got E. Where are we? Where are we heading now? Yelly. Ha! Okay. We'll go over here. So this is the binary with the main star. There it is. Oh, nice ring. Oh, I like that. Yeah, look at that. Can't see it with the goggles. Uh, have to have the goggles on to see it. But there it is. Nice glowy ring. So there it is. White dwarf companion star. It used to be an orange dwarf. Most of the planets got either got ejected or shredded to form by the hot glowing dust ring around it. Oh yes. It's a barrier center there as well. Yentris. Okay. Interesting. So there's the ring. Very cool. So first of the planets, we've got a uh, diapsa. That's losing material. Remnant of what was once a hospital planet. Now it's a dry and cold icy world that orbits a white dwarf with a very thin, invisible to the naked eye atmosphere. A shell of its former self. Oh yes. There's the little white dwarf in the middle there. You can see. It's losing material. Look, you can see it's smoking up. Interesting. Nice. Then we have Ventress over here. So this is the binary with the white dwarf. We saw that barrier center there. An ice giant who most of the mass has been blown away by the solar wind when the star was on its last stage of its life. It used to have lots of moon. Most of it crashed to the planet and now only has one left. Its name originates from a well-known automotive company. Okay. Ventress B. Over here. A near standard moon that orbits Ventress. Okay. Nice. Got a system navigator probe there. Okay. So where are we heading next? Aha! So we've got Norius over here. So it's a comet. Iron rich comet caught from interstellar space. It has a reddish appearance due to oxidation from the exposure of space radiation. Okay, so now we're going to travel two light years worth of distance to a neighbouring system. Fasten your mighty seatbelts. There we go. So we're leaving that behind. The next system is all the way over here. Beta Curious or Sentry. What's that over there? That's got a long orbit. All the way over here, what is this? Another full system here. A stable helium fusing AGB star about to enter the last stage of its life. It used to be an A high end GOV that hosts life for the Turflings. Now it has engulfed many of its inner planets, leaving Turf alone. So this is where civilization once was, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. A scorching hot lava planet that used to host life for the Turflings, but they left the planet to migrate to the outer gas giant as Beta Curious left its main sequence stage and entered this subgiant phase. That yeah, star's looking pretty, uh, yeah, pretty powerful. Yes, yeah, uh, pretty wrecked. Got all those satellites there. They probably no longer work with that being that close to all that. Okay, next up we got a uh, differ, differ circuli. 
a reddish dwarf planet that has most of its oxygen vaporized to become its atmosphere due to the ever increasing luminosity of Beta Curious. Nice, there you go. Cool. Next up, we got this one. Bed. Ooh, that's a nice colour. Bed Russo. A funky looking hot gas giant resembling. Oh, aside in just barely inside the new Hatable Zone. Has three large moons. Okay. Maybe this is where that civilization are then. So we got a B here. A standard looking moon according to the Durfling standard. Okay. Got object C over here. A hot oceanic moon with white sunrise and sunset and red sky for the entire afternoon. Is that a little look here? There it is. Turn the goggles off, get the better view. Just on the horizon, I think. Oh no, Beta Curious is there. What's going on? We should be seeing more of that then. Let's kind of land on it again. Let's go in the daytime there. There you go. Should we a little better look at it? Where is it? There you go. Turn the goggles on off. It's a very thick atmosphere. The goggles don't really work. Oh, interesting. What the heck? Let's uh, zoom out. The stars are on max brightness. Let's go below the atmosphere. Try and get a better view. Maybe it's just out. It's too thick for it. There you go. Oh, it is. Yeah, very thick atmosphere. It blocks out a lot of that light, doesn't it? There you go. All right. So then moving on to D. Lukewarm oceanic moon with islands. One of the few places where the turflings set their base. Ah, there you go. So they're out here now. In orbit of that star. Oh, yeah. Okay, next up. We're heading to... Tentral over here. Also losing material. Look at that. A large grey white gas giant with two moons. So we've got the B moon is another standard moon. There it is. Object C. A moon with lots of infamous E340 on its surface that is known for being extremely radioactive. Oh, yes. Okay. There you go. Next up, we've got uh, Mantris. An orangish gas giant with lots of moon systems. So we've got uh, moon B to F. Tiny, non-interesting, mineral-rich moons. Then we've got G over here. A tiny, barren, orange desert moon with a bluish-white atmosphere. Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, next up, we got Mantris H and J. Two standard moons. So that's these guys here. There's H and J. Find J. There it is. So then we've got I over here. Got a lot of satellites around it. Is this where they've hidden as well? Uh, also serving as one of the temporary bases for the Turflings as they plan their journey to outer space in search of a Hatable candidate. Okay. They've got two light years to travel to the other system. Um, object K over here. Both have uh, are K and L. Both have valuable minerals on their surface, turning them into a temporary mining site material for the Turflings' advanced spaceship. Okay. And then I over here. There you go there. Okay, so is that the end of this system then? Of these planets, there's one more. System navigation. So we're making another jump to another system we go. So now we head to Sentry, which I'm guessing is the thing on the other end over here. Yep. Another full star system. What's going on here? So it's a DE687. A standard looking. Uh, oh, hang on, no. I've lost where I was. Uh, F3, uh, F3V yellow white dwarf hosting three rocky planets and an ice giant. Nice. First of the planets, we've got Sentry B. There it is. Very looking, very nice. A warm ocean world with constants just barely emerging from the ocean. It has a unique purple atmosphere and fast storms. Go to visual cloud for check. Close that quickly. Visuals, clouds. The speed of those. There you go. Press play. I know you said didn't, but press play. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. You can see the lag. <laughs> Already just like blowing a load of stuff up over there. But oh well. So there you go. Uh, next up we got E C planet. A timid ocean world with lots of islands, big or small, and nothing else. There it is. Some ocean heavy objects. And then lastly, Century D. Oh, no, there's still a few more. Okay, there it is. 
I sound a looking rocky planet with a big piece of it that broke off and became a mini moon. But humans discovered E687 on its surface and underground. A very strong, non flexible, non metal that's apparently now used at building roads and extreme planets due to absurd tension it can bear. How the elements even form in the first place is a question left unanswered for a long time. Oh, yes. It's got a little fragment moon as well of what used to be part of uh, the planet. There it is. Then, lastly, moving on to Century E jump over here there it is in the dark depths black and blue hey. nice giant with fast storms in the form of beautiful gaseous bands the planet orbit is very tilted okay so and then lastly we've got tally a and tally b where are they all the way over here red dwarfs holding each other in a binary it's part of a part of the star groups where are we There's A and B. They're in a binary. Nice. And that is the end of the description. Very nice system. Enjoyed that. So there you go. The system doesn't run very fast, so. There it is. Ooh, there's a lot of orbits going around here. System navigation probe in orbit as well. So the binary. Yeah, having loads of star systems in the same simulation is always uh, a bit of a bit of a, um, trouble. Let's have a little look down here. See some of these orbits are definitely gaps. So if I delete the particles, it should run a little better. There you go. So there's all the guys in inner, inner asteroids all stinging around there. That's quite the... Uh, I should have this in a birth of death, actually. Uh, one of those systems. I've just had a load of asteroids just slung around close to the star. That'd be interesting. Could cause some carnage. See the orbits of the interstate. Well, no, the system runs for the most part. Can't see anything too crazy to watch. But yeah, there you go. So that does it for this system. So again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system, Planet and Mug, for sending this in. Hope you enjoyed it. If you guys did, press that like button. Let's see if we can go for 100 likes on today's video as well. Subscribe for more. Help us in journey to 50,000 subscribers, everybody. And yeah, that was said and done. Make sure you all have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.